Hey everybody, it's Robert and you're watching Sidestep Adventures. I'm down here with Mr. Scott and today, again for the month of October, we are at another allegedly haunted spot. We're at an old allegedly haunted bridge here and we're going to tell you why it's haunted and uh, see the if we... The legend behind it. Yeah, I'll tell you the legend behind it and uh, see if we catch anything on camera. Let's do it. Look at that pile of rocks right there. I didn't notice that. Yeah. That's somebody put those there. Yeah. All right, so we're down under the bridge now in the creek in the area where we're supposed to be able to see some ghosts maybe in a little bit, uh, but a little historical moment here you can see the foundation for the original bridge back behind the more modern concrete there this is probably an old wooden bridge way back when that had these massive field stone foundation supports right there it looks like it was removed too when they put in this concrete the natural channel cut right through here for drainage. <laughs> Come right here and look at it. Yeah. Look how flat those rocks are. Right. Look up in there. So the story goes that there was a person that was running away. From the... What was that? That's a Sasquatch. Didn't even. <laughs> that ain't pig boy, is it? Hadn't even started yet. No. <laughs> no. It's getting... I know. Mean, I threw the rock, but something, yeah. something's off in that direction. <laughs> right? Hooting and a hollering. What is that? Try to start again. I left my keys in the truck. Oh, come on, Scott. It's not, not supposed to start it like a horror movie. <laughs> yeah, let's hide behind the chainsaw. Real life, yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know if you guys heard that at all, um, but something was, something was hollering in the woods. So the legend goes that there was somebody who was enslaved on possibly the Walker Plantation, which was a huge plantation around here who was trying to um, escape from the plantation, who was trying to escape from being enslaved here. And the way that he was trying to evade capture um, was coming down this creek. And the story goes that he was coming down the creek carrying a lantern. And there used to be a blacksmith shop somewhere at the, uh, at the end of this creek here. And that's where he was captured. Um, now, the story goes that he was later killed um, there. And so, to this day, the legend is that you see a lantern coming down the creek. That he's, uh, he still wanders the creek with his lantern trying to escape. Um, the factual part of the, the legend, if it's true, is a really sad story. I don't know if there's any of the story that's this based in truth, but it uh, certainly sounds like it. It is a um, local legend, and in this area there were huge, huge plantations at the time, so it's, it's very possible that uh, it's a true story. Now, as to whether we're going to see a light coming down the creek or not, well, that's what we're here to find out. All right, so well, to kill time, you got any uh, ghost stories? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I grew up on the other side of the river, Chattahoochee River, in Bleecker, Alabama. And it's a small little community. And we had a, our little community Baptist church. And right next to my next door neighbor 
it was between my house and the church was uh, my good friend Ben. He was the preacher's son. And he'd be underneath his house in the gar his garage working on his motorcycle from time to time. And me and my brother, we'd be out playing football or doing something. And then one night we were over at Ben's. A group of us were there. And the road between the church and his house was a, a dirt road at the time. And the church behind it had the graveyard and it had one of those street lamps over the top of it. You know, so it illuminated the whole back of the church. Well, as we were down there working on helping him with his motorcycle or just goofing off talking, all of a sudden we noticed something coming up the road. And when we looked down there at it, we could plainly see a gentleman walking up the road. He had an odd looking suit and the color of it was purple. And the sleeves came out tight up here and then they flared out to a point on his arms. And the same thing happened on the pants leg. They came in and they flared out. His shoes were odd too, almost elf looking. But you know, they come out and they pointed and, and came up a little bit, or his boots rather, not his shoes. He had boots on. That's how we heard him. He could, we could hear his boots clacking on the, on the dirt road. He had a hat on. His hat, with the brim came down into a sharp point and the top of the hat came up to a point in the back pointing backwards like this and he's just walking up the road and we're back up on the hillside at ben's house just watching this fella come up the dirt road and he turns to his left paid us no mind whatsoever turns to his left and walks into behind the church opens the gate to the graveyard, walks into the graveyard, shuts the gate, continues on, goes over a specific grave. He stood on it, stood on the grave, and he sank down in it. And I'm, this is in the 70s. I might have been 16 or 17 years old. And you're talking about having to clean your britches out after this. You know, just, you know it doesn't sound bad me talking about it but to be there and see it happen you know there's at least three of us i know witnessed it and then every night in our area out there around 10 p.m somebody played taps in our graveyard in that church concord baptist church out in bleaker alabama nobody lived during that time back behind the church there there was nothing nothing but wooded area and every night, we even went down there to try to find out what it was several times. And we wouldn't, we wouldn't hear anything then. But when we come back out of it, all of a sudden taps would play again. You know, and this happened year round. We even, it was a conversation. We all talked about each other. Oh, it's 10 o'clock, <laughs> time to get ready for tomorrow, you know, because uh, somebody's playing taps down there in the graveyard every single night Man. when I was growing up. Yeah, that's that was that's what really happened in Bleecker, Alabama. So it sounds like we need to go visit that. Yeah, I have no clue of it. Her graveyard at some oh, point. Oh, I'd be glad. Yeah, yeah. I, I had uh, Sunday school teachers and people like that that are that's where they're buried. Yeah. And stuff. So I may not be as knowledgeable as Dan, but I know most of the people in there. Right. Yeah. 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 We'll definitely have to venture over there sometime. Maybe not at ten o'clock at night. But. No, I, I would rather not. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, some of the girls that were in our church, they did set a recorder out there, you know, the old cassette recorders mm -hmm. back in the 70s. They set some by some of the graves and just let it play all night recording, and they'd come back the next day and pick it up. Yeah. And there was some strange, we heard voices on the recordings. Right. You know, somebody, I distinctly remember one particular a, a female voice going, I'm cold. Mm. I'm cold. And there's, there's, there is, there's graves back there to the beginning of settlement, you know, early 18, uh, 1820s. Right. So, I mean, it's, it's an old, Bleecker's an old community. Yeah. So, yeah. And that's close to Eli Strauss' grave. That's right. Yeah. yeah. They're on the same road, but uh, just a few miles apart. 
So I don't have many ghost stories um, myself. And as we're down here ghost hunting, I don't know how to ghost hunt. As I've always said, you know, I don't, I don't believe um, in spirits, and it would take something to actually reach out and touch me to uh, to make me believe. But there's one thing that you said about the audio recordings. Yes, I've had some strange phenomena. That's you guys can check out the videos there on YouTube um, that people have heard after the fact. Um, there's one where we went to the Biggers Cemetery. Um, I went there with. Mr. Daniel a long time ago and we knelt down in front of this grave of infants as a couple of um, children who had who had died very young and we were talking about how sad that was and when we replayed the video um, I didn't hear it until somebody pointed it out on um, on YouTube uh, right at the time that we're talking about that it sounds like there's a woman crying on the video. And this has been, I, I checked the raw footage and heard it, and I sent it to a bunch of people who heard the same thing and can't figure out what Where it's it was. Coming from. Um, but that's the, that's only one of two EVPs, as they call them, that I've ever heard on my own videos. Uh, the other one was one where um, Dan and I went to the cemetery that was destroyed by the tornado and several of the tornado victims are buried at um, the old Bethesda Cemetery and at that at one point in that video I don't remember exactly where um, on the video uh, but at one point on the video Dan and I are looking at a grave and it sounds for all the world like you hear a voice coming from underground that says it sounds like an old man and it's not one of our voices it sounds like an old man coming from underground that says help me just like that, help me and it sounds like it's coming from underground that's that one is really freaky but you didn't um, hear it when you were there didn't hear it when i when we were there just heard it on the oh, on the video, video afterwards both of those we didn't hear the crying girl right sound whatever that is um and neither of these places are where people were around you know it was all uh very quiet places kind of like this um and uh yeah the... the woods can be very loud uh the other ghost story that i have is there is an old house and this one i've i've told before and everybody always says after i tell this story how can you not believe <laughs> after this one um down near i was coming back from america's georgia I was driving my 1951 Ford uh, back from America's Georgia, and I pulled over and saw this old leaning over sharecropper house. I, I've got a picture of it um, somewhere. I'll have to see if I can find it. Um, and if I can find it, I'll put it in a video. But there was this old sharecropper house that was leaning way over, and I stopped to take pictures of it. I didn't do a video of it. Um, I just stopped and got my camera out and was snapping pictures of it. And while I was taking pictures of it, I kept feeling like I heard whispering coming from around me. And it, it sounded like somebody, the, the impression that I got is somebody was talking about me being at the house. And this was in a, this was, you know, nothing but timberland all around. It wasn't during hunting season, you know, there should not have been anybody else around basically. Um, and I was, as I was taking pictures of it, uh, then I got the feeling like I was being watched. And I kept hearing the whispers. And I was looking around, you know, where are these people at that are talking about me taking pictures of this? I got the feeling that I was being watched. And I just ignored it. I just kept putting it more and more out of the back of my head as it, as I was there. And I left there. Um, I finished taking pictures and I left there. Got back in my car, headed back to Columbus from America. So I was in between America and Buena Vista. And uh, as I was going down the road, I got the most depressing feeling just came over me like there was no hope in the world and you know just the darkest deepest feeling and it took me a while to uh to shake it i called brian when i was driving back and, and told him i was like Dude, i don't know what's wrong it's just this, this i left from there and this horrible feeling came over me and and everybody who has heard that story always says you definitely had a, a paranormal experience there was something you know something bad happened at that house and you felt the the 
darkness from it or something like that. And I call it a uh, trick of the mind now, but it, it freaked me out at the time for sure. That's an odd one. Yeah, it was. I, I actually, it affected me so much that I swore I would never go back to that place. Okay. And to this date, I have not been back there. I did drive past it and the house is completely falling in now okay. but it was just a uh a modest... i'm not gonna stop and take photos of I, ain't, again, I ain't stopping again though no it's on the ground well i don't know i don't know how to do this the ghost hunting thing i don't see any light no. coming down the creek I mean, it's getting darker and darker well you know legends are legends a lot of times they're that way to keep kids from you know hanging out in places absolutely and things like that you know grown-ups develop legends and sometimes the legends are, are true yeah sometimes they're based in fact and as the story goes on and on it becomes a uh, a legend makes you wonder it does but well, just one thing also you got to remember these are all woodlands now but for years they have been whole bunch of farms out here this Absolutely. land used to be covered with people you know yes the different evolutions you know some being very successful some of them uh, you know losing everything absolutely so that's one thing that i've talked about uh before is you look at this and it's nothing but woods around here and you think it's always been woods but it wasn't this was all i guarantee you, every bit of this was cleared off and was farmland and you can just look at the trees through there there's not an old tree yeah you know uh, there's not an old growth tree around here it's all just uh younger stuff yeah right. so we, we take for granted for what was on the land at one time and you're thinking okay there's nobody here there's nobody been here and that's not true especially as many graveyards as we've found in the woods yep i'm surprised we haven't seen i'm surprised you haven't recorded more right yeah. voices i don't want to say spirits but more voices right you know definitely so i mean somebody's been down here somebody piled those rocks up right there we didn't do it and the and the water didn't do that mm -mm. yeah well this is a very quiet place. As long as we don't hear any more hollering like we did yeah. a minute ago. Swamp yetis, swamp yetis, you wanna look out for them. Yeah. Mm. You know, speaking of which, there's a surprising amount of Bigfoot sightings down in, here. In the region, yeah. Yeah, in the region. Not here there's in a, particular. It's supposed to be one in uh, off uh, south of Uchi Creek. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, there's on the Uchi Creek. Uh, it's documented. It doesn't mean that it's true, but I mean, down in Rude Rude Creek Park, down in Stewart County, has a bunch of spooky activity allegedly. I hope your shoes are waterproof. They are. Oh, good. <laughs> good deal. They cost me enough. They better be. Yeah, mine are. You need a hand, Mr. Scott? No, I'm good. I just. Got to bend a certain way. <clears throat> Traverse. <laughs> Walking straight. All right. Well, I think we can, uh, you know, call this legend debunked. Unless we, you know, see any light coming down the creek. Well, that would have been the hillside that the blacksmith would have been on. Yeah, so I always thought he was coming down this way. This is where the... Coming down the creek? Yeah, coming down the creek. This was my interpretation of it. 
Mm. Can you imagine the walking down the creek with just a lantern trying to escape at night? And well, yeah, trying to get away. I mean, yeah. I, I will say, as a young young lad, uh, myself and Kellen Pope walked down Mulberry Creek. Oh, really? Yeah. But it was daytime. Okay, yeah. And, uh, I mean, we saw all kinds of stuff. And uh, we, we stayed in the water the whole way. Yeah. And we'd find a swimming spot, swim for a while, and then keep going. We were nuts. <laughs> we, we were, this is the same guy, guy I rode down the Uchi Creek in a canoe with. Yeah. You know, for such a quiet area, you just, you, the woods are loud. Yeah. Did you hear something hit the sign while you were yeah. saying that's funny? Funny how that goes. Well, I think that's going to be enough uh, ghost hunting for us for today. It sounds like Sasquatch might be out here instead. So we're going to go ahead and uh, get out of here. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and a few ghost stories. We'll see you next time. Yeah, ghost hunting, not Sasquatch hunting. That's right. That's, that's for another time. <laughs>